hello everyone welcome to my channel today i'm gonna do a video about all of the different types of paper that i'm using for my paintings so the first paper that i have is the mont marty watercolor paper pad it is a four size 300 gsm and it has 12 sheets and it's pretty regular paper i did a little test over here and i have to say that i don't really like how it came out this paper tends to absorb a lot of water and it tends to get very soggy and it has this gritty kind of really uneven finish and the paper doesn't hold up to water that well it tends to get crumbly and tends to get damaged so overall it's not uh, it's not a good paper but I believe this paper is really okay for oil pastel paintings and then I have the exact same paper in A3 size as well I keep buying A3 size paper because I use them for my for the illustrations of my children's books then quickly moving on to my favorite uh, one of my favorite papers the Kansan watercolor paper this is not a sketchbook uh, the the papers came in like loose stack this paper is 300 gsm cold pressed so you will get some texture on the paper surface this is how thick a paper is this paper can handle water really well without crumbling and being damaged it's a really sturdy good quality watercolor paper it works perfectly well for oil pastel paintings as well so I get a lot of questions from my subscribers about the best kind of paper you can use for oil pastels you can you definitely use this and this stack is the same Kansan watercolor paper only difference is this is a5 size this is a size that I like the best so this was done using watercolor pencils and I use my Faber Castor Polychromos on top of that. You can see that the paper isn't wrinkled, damaged or the colors haven't bled through to the other side. That's how good quality these papers are. So this paper can withstand a lot of layers of different mediums and I have done a lot of paintings using these papers. I have all of these videos up on my channel I'll put links to those in the video description if you want to check them out moving on next I have the Derwent sketch pad Derwent is a British brand and I also have the artist watercolor pad which is a4 sized I have other Derwent products like the Derwent intense color pencils uh, which are absolutely phenomenal but these paper pads are of really poor quality this was done using Derwent Intense pencils I have a separate video for this by the way if you're interested I'll put a link to it in the video description and also up on the cards most of these sketches were done using watercolors and then Derwent Intense color pencils on top of that but this paper doesn't handle water mediums that well you can see that some of the colors have bled through to the other side of the paper. The paper is very thin and almost see-through. Also, the, the paper doesn't have a lot of tooth uh, or texture. So, it won't work really well with pastel mediums either. Also, this paper is bright white. I like my sketchbooks to be slightly beige colored. Then, there's the Derwent watercolor pad as well. Uh, which is kind of below average it has 12 shades 300 gsm price is okay it's affordable but it doesn't handle water well i'm a little disappointed with this brand when it comes to their paper okay next up we have the mont Marte sketch pad i happen to like this one it has uh, 120 papers and A4 sized quite reasonable quality for the price especially for a student and these are some of the paintings I have done so far and this sketch pad looks and feels like a typical vintage sketch pad 
It has a plastic cover and it has a somewhat sturdy spiral binding. And notice that this uh, brand is Montmartre. I didn't like Montmartre watercolor paper that you saw earlier in the video. But this sketch pad is quite okay. So just like this visual diary, I bought another one. And this one has that typical old vintage artist journal kind of look. And I like that. This one has a nice cover. It's a fabric cover. And their brand name is nicely embossed at the back. And this is 120 GSM A4 paper. The papers are not super white. Uh, they are beige colored, just as you, you would expect in a sketchbook. I also have this sketch pad, which is different to the ones that you saw earlier. But this one happens to be my favorite. It has this nice lettering uh, on the front cover, which is clearly Chinese. And out of all of the sketch pads that you saw, this one is the cheapest. And there's a like very nice vintage kind of look about this one as well. And the paper quality is so much better. And when you turn the page, there is this really nice transparent yellow paper. It's beautifully made very artistic and I did this uh, sketchbook justice by starting off with a really Chinese looking painting and I plan to use this entire sketchbook for botanical kind of illustrations. That's what I have done all throughout this entire sketchbook so far. Now because I like this sketch pad so much I ended up buying two more, just like the first one. So now I have got three. Just because they are super cheap and this paper is the best quality paper that I found out of all of the sketchbooks that I have. I will mention where I bought all of my uh, papers from in the video description. So in case if you're interested, you can visit the store yourself and check this out. I believe they still have this item in the store. Next, I have the De La Rowney Aqualine watercolor pad. The size is 9 by 12 and it's 300 GSM, cold press, so the paper will have some texture. This is somewhat expensive. Everything else that I'm going to talk about in the rest of the video are going to be uh, towards the expensive side. I've done a small test over here. Uh, this is watercolors and the two lines are using oil pastels. I don't think there will be any problems with this paper. It seems to be solid, but then again, I'll have to do a full painting to say for sure. But from the looks of it, I don't expect any problems. You can see that the paper doesn't have a lot of texture and the other side is similar. I kind of like that. I'm not a big fan of highly textured paper. I usually digitalize the paintings that I do. If a paper has a lot of texture, all of that texture will be captured in the photographs. I personally like my paintings to look smooth and flawless. Anyway, so let's move on to the next one. I Again, it's De La Rowney. This is mixed media paper. And I generally tend to like mixed media paper. I have a, other, other uh, brands of mixed media paper and I like all of them. Once again, I have done a little test over here using watercolors and I think it, it is great, just as expected. This paper has literally no tooth, so I prefer this one over the watercolor paper. And the uh, paper is quite thick, no wrinkling, no damages, no bleed through, nothing. It's a very solid, thick paper. It absorbed water and retained the color vibrance superbly. Alright, so let's move on to the Windsor and Newton pastel paper next. I have used this one quite a lot. You probably have seen them on my channel. Uh, this came in six different colors. The paper is quite thin. It's 160 GSM, A4 size. The, this pad has 24 papers and I have used up almost all of them for various different paintings. Most of them are on my channel. 
and this paper is heavily textured as you can see that is a common quality of pastel papers which tends to be rough so that it can hold pastel pigment well so this paper is ideal for soft pastel paintings and i like the colors of the papers they are very neutral earthy grounded colors Next, I have another pastel paper, the Colorful Warm Pack. I absolutely love this paper. It's ideal for soft pastel paintings, but I'm not much of a soft pastel artist. So I use this mostly for color pencil paintings. I have wax based color pencils um, and also soft pastel pencils. This pack has these colors extremely well chosen great set of colored backgrounds i want to buy their cool pack next time uh, now that i have the warm pack because i like these colors that they have very carefully and tastefully picked background colors by the way this paper is artist quality it's archival light fast which means that paintings done on these papers can last for a while it's cotton based it has 10 sheets of 9 by 12 paper and so I suppose it's really high quality paper you can see that this paper is extremely textured it feels almost like sandpaper that's why I said it's ideal for soft pastels these papers can take many layers of soft pastel pigment so this is the same paper that i cut in half uh, so this medium is colored pencils you can see that it can be used very well with colored pencils you can see how grainy it is is the texture of the paper heavily textured sandpaper like quality so giving you a close-up I'm not much of a soft pastel artist but because this paper works really well with colored pencils I'm gonna buy these again and I'll probably get the cool pack next time next I have my most expensive and the thickest heaviest and possibly the best paper I have to date and it's the Strathmore 500 series mixed media paper as I said before, I like, I really like mixed media paper because they tend to be very thick and uh, they tend to work really well with multiple mediums. You can say that it's heavyweight because it's 500 GSM. It's the heaviest that I have owned so far. So far, all of the papers that you saw in this video are 300 GSM. And this one is 500 GSM um, it has 12 sheets it's 100% cotton and natural white it's archival and the size is 9 by 12 I guess I cannot possibly get anything better than this this one has all of the qualities that I like to see in a paper I have used these papers in only one painting so far I don't want to use them up so I just keep them stacked in my cupboard uh, and I'll be only using those in a very special occasion these papers are uh, quite expensive and the brand is Strathmore see it has no tooth at all I like smooth paper um, so that's why I usually buy hot pressed paper hot pressed paper don't have a lot of tooth you can use this paper uh, for pretty much any medium watercolors pastels oils wax based mediums you name it you this paper can handle it you can even use multiple mediums on top of each other so that's how good these papers are and i also like how this is like nicely glued to the spine so you can easily remove it and paint on it and frame it separately it doesn't have to be attached to the spine okay next I have the last one but not the least this is one of my favorites actually my favorite is the one that you saw previously but I also like this one very much this is Arches or Arches I don't know how to pronounce it I think it's called Arches 
it's french by the way <laughs> and uh, this is a very expensive paper uh, probably the most expensive i have right now so this one is also 9 by 12 the ideal size for me um, it has 12 sheets and i spent 10,000 in my local currency just to get this one um, but it's worth it i guess it's 100 percent cotton and it's hot pressed and it's archival it's not textured at all because it's hot pressed as opposed to cold pressed i like my paper smooth so i like i prefer this one the store also had a cold pressed version of this but i spent on the hot press because that's what i prefer actually this is probably the most sought after paper by most watercolor artists uh, because this has a lot of qualities that are ideal for watercolor paintings. It's archival, it's cotton paper, handles water pretty well and it's very historical also. It's made in France and it has a long history behind it. Just like the Sennelier oil pastel paintings or the Sennelier brand in general, Arches is also a well-known French brand that is very highly regarded. Alright, so I think we have finally come to the end of my artist paper tour. And yes, you can see I have a mixture of really good high quality professional grade papers as well as just student grade normal sketchbooks. So I have a range of things that I use. Uh, by the way, a lot of people ask on my channel what is the best paper for oil pastel paintings. Guys, there is no best paper for oil pastel paintings. You can use any type of paper that is available to you. I personally use mostly Kansan paper, Kansan watercolor paper. Now, it doesn't have to be a particular brand. You can use uh, less expensive Chinese watercolor paper. It's good enough for oil pastels. Uh, so, 250 GSM to 300 GSM. Any watercolor paper between that range is good enough. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.